If you're just joining in, my name is Srini Saripali. Thank you for, uh, thank you for, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, thank you for for the part your participation. Uh, thank you for. Uh, uh, if you're on my email list, you had been getting my emails about um, about about my decluttering exercise and the way I went from practically uh, having a big office outside, a big office inside, um, and ha having a, a full garage with all kinds of stuff, completely uh, getting rid of everything, and and literally streamlining, uh, recapturing my time. Uh, and, and by getting my environment in order. And I talked about this in a previous video, uh, uh, in a live cast, uh, the day for yesterday. Yesterday I could not come live, or I, I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, just start my laptop. I had some issues with my, uh, with my, um, with my computer here. And then here I am with you today. And, uh, and the idea, uh, is, uh, to kind of take the conversation from the same point where I left last time, which is, I talked to you uh, about about um, well, as I concluded the last episode, or the last live cast, um, I promised that I'm going to come and share my three-step system uh, or the three tools that that you need uh, to kind of quickly start decluttering uh, your work and your home environment. That was my promise to you uh, when I uh, when I left last time. And, and I thought, uh, I'll take this opportunity here, um, and, uh, and, 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 and kind of share this with you. Uh, my brother, uh, all the way from India, uh, <laughs> buddy, uh, <laughs> Srinu, I can't, thank you, buddy. Thanks for joining, uh, uh, all the way. Uh, fantastic. Very glad to see you. Very glad to see you, brother. Uh, you know, I tried texting you a few times, but I could not reach you. Uh, maybe I'll call you uh, right after I'm done. Okay, so keep the phone with you. I'll call you after I'm done with the live cast. Okay, um, I want to share with you some uh, a, a cool little strategy that will take your house or your office or everything that you have got going. Uh, if you are suffering from a lot of clutter, you are suffering from a lot of stuff. You have no idea, uh, you know, what to do uh, and how to structure your house. Uh, then this is for you. So spend next 20, 30 odd minutes with me. I'll walk you through exactly how I did it. And the most important part is if your life is getting redundant, if, a guy, if your life is getting redundant and, and you are trying to buy stuff to triage your redundancy, um, I'll tell you this, the more uh, you're cluttered, the more are your your, your thoughts are cluttered, your emotions are cluttered, uh, your interactions are cluttered, your actions are cluttered. As a result of that, your outcomes also will become cluttered. It's weird how that relationship works, but then everything is interlinked, everything is intertwined. Okay, so that being said, uh, I will quickly shift away from the screen. I want to share with you a few things. Uh, where did this all start? I was not like this. I was not or I'm, I'm a guy, I'm still, I still believe I'm not organized. I still believe I'm scattered. I still believe I have too many things that I try to do at a given point in time. I pretend to multitask. I pretend to multitask. There's nothing called multitasking, by the way. Uh, we, by default, are single tasking. If you want to really do something meaningful, something impactful, something with depth, something with that makes a difference, you can't multitask. Everything, anything that's worth doing needs effort, needs focus and a relentless focus. So there is no way that you can do a bunch of things here and there simultaneously and expect yourself to succeed across all of those things. Doesn't work. Um, sometimes you feel as if, you know, you're able to do a few things. Uh, the truth is, no, you cannot. Um, and, and the reasoning behind that is you may feel that way because you you have some uh, there are some commonalities between the stuff that you do and because of this commonalities you may believe that you have enough strength or you have enough um, know-how or you have enough resources within you uh, or you feel a certain level of confidence to get something done and 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 or all of these things done done and you feel that you can scale and you can you you have this but truth the matter of the, tr the, 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 the truth is you cannot just multitask and multitasking as a concept. I'm, I've, I've met uh, the best psychologists in the world. I have met the best mentors in the world. I have best coaches in the world, uh, best philosophers in the world. I mean, all of them agree. There is no such thing called multitasking. Uh, you can try. 
If you're successful, let me know. I want to study you if you're successful at this. Okay, so that being said, all this started because uh, at one point, I started to realize that I was losing my papers. I was losing, uh, you know, I was, you know, I'm at a point of my life where my memory is starting to fade and I'm slowly starting to fade away. And, uh, and, and I started realizing, man, if I want to be effective, if I want to be, uh, if I want to be lethal in the stuff that I do, like really effective, like just, just like, like I know I take a single shot and I just, I want to hit it, right? If I want to be that way, then I need to, um, get control of the things that I can get control on, right? Uh, there are things that you can control. There are things that you cannot control. And, and the things that I like to control are the things that have no life. In other words, uh, for example, um, you know, the stuff that sits on my table, the stuff that is around my house, these are the things that I have control. I can, I can sort them. I can, I can, I can, I can, uh, I can sort, I can purge, I can, I can stack them, I can uh, order them, I can rearrange them, I can do all that kinds of stuff with the stuff that I have with me already. Uh, the more I started accumulating, the more trouble I had managing. If you own something, get ready to manage it. Right? There is no way you can simply own something and not manage it. I mean, there are ways to do things and that happens in certain areas of life, but most of the times, 99% of the times you will, you will, whatever you own, you have to manage. It becomes difficult, it becomes harder, right? So, all this started uh, when I wanted to clear my environment. That's where I started. That's where I, I, um, I started, uh, I started uh, to realize that I'm, I'm, you know, the areas I'm operating in, they needs to be cleared. For example, my inbox and my has to be cleared. My, uh, my office room has to be cleared. Obviously, we're talking about that. Uh, and, 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 uh, you know, my car has to be clean. My closet has to be clean. Everything that I own has to be clean. Right? Very simple stuff. But the, you know, it, it's under, under, it's not well understood. It's, uh, we live in a society where it's driven by consumerism. Uh, you need to acquire a lot of stuff, have a lot of stuff. Look, look at the, look at all these buildings, right? Do we need all this? I don't know. You tell me, right? All this stuff, right? All this stuff. Uh, anyway, so there is an incredible saying by, uh, by the great, uh, by the great, um, um, Edwin Markham, who wrote an incredible, uh, you know, uh, he said, um, we all are blind unless we see, that in the human plan, nothing is worth making unless it makes the man, right? Why make these buildings glorious if man unbuilt it goes? In vain we build a city unless the builder also grows. So if you are not fundamentally growing, right, what's the point of building all these buildings? It doesn't make any sense. So that was one of my, in fact, I credit this whole process to Edwin Markham and his, his, his poem. In fact, you wake me up in the middle of the night and, and I can go through this poem with you in my sleep, in my dreams. That's how embedded this is in my brain. Um, well, that was the step number one. Uh, that's where the orientation happened. That's when I start, I got an exposure to, to man, I just, I don't need a lot of stuff, right? That's where it started. Um, I'm experimenting now with my clothes. Right? There's a possibility you'll come to this page and you'll keep seeing me the same shirt or the same suit that I'll be having and I'll be doing these live casts right here. Um, it's, it's the same backdrop more or less, right? So things, we don't need a lot of stuff. That's the idea, right? Uh, things, and I made this point last time too. And I said, listen, uh, it, things that you possess right now with you, if you cannot get rid of them, they instead possess you. See that? Profound. Whoever said it. And I'm paraphrasing it. Very simple. Very simple stuff. So, that was one. The second inflection point happened when I lost my mother. I lost my mother. Um, you know, the minute you lose someone, everything behind them simply goes away. It's magical how we clean up. Right? And if you have not structured yourself, and when you leave, you are leaving a lot of stuff for your loved ones. I'm still struggling to, to, to sort out stuff that my mother left behind. Or my father, in fact, after his stroke. I'm struggling to sort things out. 
You don't want to, as much as you're working hard to raise your children, and as long as much as you are working hard to give them a great life, you are educating them, you're sending them to the best schools possible, you're doing whatever you can to make them the best individuals, a better version of yourself, right? Man, when you leave, and you are not telling them that you're leaving, and you've not structured stuff for them, painful. Painful. They're going to be doing the stuff and be cursing you for the rest of their lives. Forget about your Your life is done. You're gone. But they'll be cursing you. Not worth it. You just want to be seamless. You came in seamlessly. You're leaving seamlessly. As simple as that. So that was the second inflection point in my life. I saw my um, my big brother, my, my, my cousin, who is godfather to me, practically speaking. He passed away right after my mother. And, and he left things, you know, scattered. Right? No idea what was going on. And I promised myself, I said, if, I'm, if I may not become a good individual in this lifetime, let's say, right? I may not live up to people's expectations, but then let me do something, at least structure myself in a way where I can seamlessly go, right? At least not being cursed after gone. Less and less, our gen, you know, in, I mean, my generation lays less time and, and our next generation is struggling. I mean, kids in the schools are struggling with time, right? People, you know, teenagers, you know, 8th grade, ninth grade, 10th grade or whatever dates they're going to. They are, you know, my daughter is, you know, is awake at, at like 12.30 in the night trying to get her homework and preparation and stuff done, right? It's becoming harder by the day. Lot of information being condensed down. Uh, and, and expectations are high, you got to perform, and very less time for these souls uh, when it comes down to living their life. So you got to make it simple. So that's a long rant, but that's, that's exactly how I got started. So it all started when I stepped on a mountain, okay? To step on a mountain, you have to become extremely intentional, extremely intentional. So if you have not hiked, you have not been on a mountain, you have never seen what a mountain is all about, uh, you know, I'm telling you this, um, if you graduated in college, maybe you got lucky, okay? You got a job, you went through an interview, you got the job, maybe you got lucky. Maybe you got lucky two times, three times, right? Four times. Maybe you got in competition, you competed. Maybe the competition was weak. You succeeded. Maybe, I don't know. We can't say. If you really want to compete with yourself, like really, with your emotionally, physically, mentally being tested across all fac faculties, right? Go get on a mountain. That's what I did. I was not a climber. I have, you know, I lived on, on, on the streets. I mean, I mean, at, 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 in other words, I lived at the sea level, right? Never been uh, in an area where I could just get on a mountain climb. And even if I was on a mountain, it was like 2000 feet or 1800 feet, something like that uh, from the sea level, right? In terms of altitude, very low. Right? And, and, and my game completely changed the minute I stepped on a mountain. And I'll tell you, I'll show you exactly how this all happened quickly and, and why that mountain or that mo mountain mindset is the single biggest factor to my living right now. On the mountain, you can't change your clothes, right? Of course, you can change your layers, but you don't ha you're, you're, you're not going there to look good, right? You're, going, you're not going there to eat the best food. You're not going there to, uh, to have a comfortable sleep. You're not, going to, you're not going there to have great appetite. None of those things. You're going there because you want to see under all those, when all those things are challenged, when all those things are in question, you, how would you perform as an individual? You, how would you succeed as an individual? You, how do you persist as an individual? That's the test. So my deal is this, unless you get on a mountain, unless you do something at that level, I don't think you are tested. I don't think you are tested. I want to um, sincerely thank you all specifically for all those who are posting comments. My friend Sukan, brother, thank you for joining all the way from Dallas. Uh, love you, brother. Haven't spoken to you in, in so many years, but, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, if you are, um, you know, 
um, you know, I love love to call you back and, and talk to you. Okay, um, someone saying thank you for joining. You were there, you know, two days ago. Thank you for joining. Appreciate the comment. Hello to you too, um, Nirmala. Thank you for uh, saying hello to me. Appreciate your comment. Appreciate you joining and watching this. Thank you. Okay, so uh, if you're just joining in now, by all means, uh, do me a favor. You know, say something so that I know that you are here. And 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 uh, hopefully this is motivating. Uh, my idea is to inspire you, is to motivate you, uh, is to share a few tools with you. This is going to become very deep in just a few seconds here. Okay, so stay with me. I'm going to share with you a lot of stuff as I go through this whole whole live cast through this podcast. Uh, but you know, by all means, please uh, like the page so that we can reach some more people. And hopefully these videos will make sense. And as I come and I do this, a lot of people emailed me saying, you know, you need to come. Um, and in a better time, I said, sure, I will. I probably will choose a time that I'll be consistent with the live casts going forward. Okay, so that being said, uh, let me, um, I want to show you, I got on a mountain. Let's talk about the mountain specifically because, uh, so so let's, uh, let me show you the mountain that, that, uh, uh, that I climbed. And this mountain um, is, uh, let me see if I can, uh, Kind of bring that in. Okay, so uh, there it is. That's the mountain. It's called the Mount Shasta. This was the first time, um, you know, I attempted climbing this mountain. Um, um, how many years ago? Eight years ago, I believe. Eight years ago, uh, or seven years ago, um, I attempted climbing this mountain. And uh, the first time I attempted, climbing, there are multiple routes. So let me uh, show you a bigger picture of this. So. As you see, hopefully it's visible on, on the video now, there are multiple routes. You see the green um, layers, uh, or uh, I would call, uh, uh, okay, uh, now that's, that's clear. So the top, the very peak, the very top is, is about 14,172 or, or something like that. That's the peak, okay? That's the height of the mountain. And different ways you can approach this mountain. And, and the beauty of this mountain is it's it, it well it's next door to me four hours from where you know I can drive, uh, but I've seen people climb uh, go climb bigger mountains, but somehow they don't climb this mountain. I have no idea. Uh, it doesn't look good on the resume. It's it doesn't give a lot of uh, bragging you know ability. It doesn't this mountain doesn't have a bragging ability or it doesn't look good on the resume. Let me put it that way, right? But it's very hard to climb. It involves uh, a, a, a certain level of of physical uh, capability, a certain level of endurance, certain level of cardio to get on this mountain. Uh, it takes two days if you're in good shape to go. Sometimes people take three days. Sometimes people take a week. Uh, I've seen people have done this in five hours. Uh, all the the bottom and to the top the 14,000 feet and come down so the different ways people approach this but on a, on a good if you're in good shape your good physique good uh, physiology uh, good you know structure then you can get on this mountain in just about two days and two is a good number two is a good number to get on the mountain so it's very uh, you know awesome Right? And here I, I was, this was my first mountain I ever stepped on, practically speaking, and, and not well, not physically fit, uh, not um, by any means, um, uh, you know, um, um, uh, you know, any which way uh, capable of getting on the mountain, but I put on a, a 55 pound pack, backpack with all my stuff, all my food and everything in it, in it and I, I went on this mountain. The idea was to get to the peak and I was so damn wrong. I was wrong. No preparation, nothing. And I stepped out, I stepped 10 feet and I collapsed. 10 feet and I stopped. I'm not collapsed, stopped. And miserable, miserable. And, and uh, that was a big, huge setback to me. That first time I realized, man, I don't have a competing spirit within me. I don't have the ability to compete at a, at a level. And up till this point, I faked it all my life, maybe, right? Uh, some support, some, you know, some level of, uh, you know, hand holding. Um, you know, along the way. And, and here I am left alone to figure out and to get, you know, to stand on my feet and get on this mountain and not able to. I had an incredible coach with me at that point. And the coach dragged me, the guide dragged me. 
and kept on dragging me while the rest of, rest of the team were, were way ahead and he kept on dragging me to a point where I got on to about 10,000 feet and that is the best physical achievement I ever had in my life. I played games, I played sports, but nothing, I was not good at all in any of those things. And, and I got to 10,000 feet um, after eight hours of, of hiking on the snow. And let me bring the screen, this image up, hopefully uh, you can see. Now that is a good representation of the mountain. Hopefully you are able to see it. Um, let me, um, uh, you know, right. So this is the mountain, right? And you'll see, uh, you know, hopefully it's visible on the screen, but we start right at the bottom. Uh, we go through this place called Helen Lake um, at the horse camp. And from the horse camp, we go all the way to Helen Lake. And from Helen Lake, we go uh, up into the Red Banks and from there to the Misery Hill and from there to the summit. So right around the Heaven Lake is where the 10,000 feet is. And I got to Heaven Lake and I gave up. I said, I don't have anything left in me. I'm done. Okay. Then uh, three months later, I made another effort. I said, man, this time I'm going to really go and, and, and nail this. So this time I hired a coach and uh, or a guide. And then uh, I practiced for three months. I worked very hard. And then I got on uh, the mountain. And I really, you know, this time I got up to 14,000 feet. Okay. I, I got up to 14,000 feet and, uh, and, and 14,000 feet is, is hard, you know, hard. I mean, you know, it's for a, for a person who never, it was like a second big attempt, a second biggest thing I ever done in terms of physical endurance. Um, and, and just getting to 14,000 feet was just an unbelievable experience. But here's what happened. I got to 14,000 feet and I was just like 172 vertical feet. Um, and I, um, I gave up on the mountain. Um, here I am literally 172 feet below the peak and I'm quitting, right? I'm leaving. Why? Because right behind this, the behind me, as you see in the back is my guide. And my guide is telling me, you don't have any energy left and you need to now, we need to turn back. There is no way you can climb 172 feet. The peak was just above me. I was seeing the summit. I was seeing people just going up to the summit. And here I am completely depleted. No energy left, nothing. And I need to get down. I need to get down. Um, and, and there is a rule in mountaineering that once your coach, once your guy tells you that you should be doing something, you need to take their advice seriously and follow their instructions. On the very peak, you are, your energy levels are low. You don't have enough food. You don't have enough water in the system. You're not hydrated. Uh, you're, you know, you're, you're pretty much, uh, you know, don't have what it takes. And, and your thinking also gets clouded. And you got to be very careful. Uh, and I've seen a lot of people now that I've been into mountaineering uh, in, in, a, in a deeper level. I've met a lot of people whose thinking has completely reversed on the top due to altitude and due to, uh, you know, due to exhaustion and things like that. So I got to uh, this point. I want to play this video to you quickly and you'll see exactly how exhausted I am I'm trying to um, get this. Hopefully you can hear this. In terms of hurt. I have no idea if this, this video is, is playing for you, but, but uh, you, you can clearly see um, that, you know, I'm, all I'm saying is, man, I'm quitting. I, I can't, I can't, um, you know, I can't. Uh, ho hopefully this is, this video is playing because I can't hear it. Um, but you get the point. So I, I, I give up. That's what I'm saying is I'm giving up. I'm going uh, and I'm going back. I'm going to come back and attempt this one more time is, is, is what I'm saying. And I'm walking away uh, from, from, from the mountains. And I did. Uh, I did walk away um, and, and only to come back one more time. Um, so a um, few more attempts happened. I tried a few, few more times over the years. 
um, and uh, six times I failed sometimes due to altitude sickness uh, so, uh, you know a couple of times couple of times because the weather was bad uh, then a couple of times because somebody in my team fell sick uh, as all this happened more and more people started uh, joining me on these attempts the idea is to attempt the idea is to is to measure ourselves uh, the mountain would not lie right uh, to to you may think you may sit in the house on the couch and think that how great of a physique you have and how how good of a body you have and how well you are you are taking care of your health and all uh, but once you get on a mountain like this it's not going to lie to you right very simple it did not lie to me and i came back um, to the mountain uh, last year after all these years and years of effort here is me on the peak on the summit and 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 uh, and recording a video celebration video and explaining it took me seven att uh, seven attempts to summit this mountain. Um, well, why am I sharing these videos with you? Why am I even showing you all these things? Very simple. The reason why I'm sharing this with you is this is where the transformation started. Um, I started to really understand how much should I drink? How much should I eat? How much should I preserve? How much should I carry? If I carry a little bit more food, then I'm, I'm packing too much stuff. Uh, if I'm drinking too much water, then I don't have enough water to go down, right? If I'm, if I'm expensing all my energy going up the mountain, I don't have enough energy to come back. So it's optimizing yourself at every level it's not about decluttering the house it's also it's 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 not about you know throwing stuff away that's not the point of the discussion the point of the discussion is that you need to 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 optimize yourself you need to create an environment that's optimal to you within which you're operating within which you are performing within which you are making a difference within which you are really uh, you know uh, as you are doing stuff you're growing as you're doing stuff you're expanding right uh, you know uh, if there are two ways to live this life either you curtail your expectations either you cut down your expectations and live a great life right or Keep your expectations high, keep adding more expectations on top. At the same time, rage, expand your understanding, right? Rage your understanding as much as you can. So, so the idea is to, um, you know, do both, right? If you can do both, for example, make sure that your expectations are realistic. At the same time, make sure that your understanding is deep. Your understanding is wide. Your understanding is meaningful. You are attaching yourself the right way to the activities and you are attaching yourself the right way to the emotions of your expectations. It's amazing when you get these two things done. But anyway, so that, that's the idea. It's all started that, man, if I can carry a bag and with the food and the water and get on a mountain, so the lessons there are, you know, why can't I do that on the ground? Why can't I do that uh, with everything that I do. Uh, all I need to do is this laptop. That's it. This one laptop. It does everything for me, right? So you buy the best laptop you can and do your stuff. So you, you probably can. A lot of people do get away with an iPad or 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 a or their iPhone or whatever, right? So there is not that many things you need, honestly speaking. Um, I am still so uh, you know uh, you know streamlining all this i'm simplifying all this uh, let me quickly get to uh before i get carried away here uh let me see who are uh, who 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 all do we have someone you're saying um very inspiring thank you appreciate uh, appreciate your comment uh, thank you for that um let me see who all we have um Okay, I completely got on this without giving a f you know enough notice to anyone or to everyone. Okay, Vishy, thank you for joining. Appreciate you uh, saying it's playing. Thank you, appreciate it. Oh, were you able to? Um, uh, 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 any, were you able to listen to the sound of those videos that I played? Did they play? The sound play? Just let me know. Okay, I know it's playing, but were you able to hear the sound? An ounce of practice is worth a ton of theory. Yes, we need to start. Uh, we need to start acting. Absolutely, truly. Um, that's very well said. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I have a modified uh, version of the saying, um, an ounce of, uh, an ounce of, uh, um, you know, uh, an ounce of action is better than a pound of meditation. Something like that. <laughs> okay. Uh, hi, Steve. Oh, good to see you. Oh, Steve, I want to, I want to, uh, you know, Steve, uh, you, you know, you are the first person to ever take me on a mountain. You, you are the first to take me on snow uh, and put some ski boots uh, beneath my feet and, and push me from the Squaw Valley all the way down. <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> okay. The voice was clear. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Um, anyway, so, um, 
Very simple, right? So um, let me, in, in my promise, as a part of the promise of this video, when, when I started, um, I promised you that the three things that I want to share with you that dramatic, uh, that drastically changed, uh, you know, my um, my uh, my house, my environment. I want to show you three tools that everybody has in their possession. If not, just go to Walmart, buy them, or or Amazon, wherever. Uh, you know, it will not cost you a lot of money. So. The single biggest bottleneck we have is we have a lot of stuff in our house. We don't know what to do. And, and we, you know, if you're, you, you, you're scattered all over the place and, and what can you do to organize that stuff? Uh, I'm not talking about trashing stuff yet, right? That's not the point of discussion. So at least you need to know where you have your stuff and so that you have an index in your mind. And if some, if, if you need something, uh, you can, because you have an index of where you have the stuff, you can simply go there and, and take them out. Very simple. Right? Very simple. Uh, that is the motto or that is the idea behind, uh, you know, uh, organizing stuff. Now, whether you need it or you don't need it, uh, that's a different discussion altogether. So um, the tools um, that that I, I recommend that you have uh, are these, a scotch tape, a, uh, a, see-through transpar uh, 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 transparent um, you know plastic uh, what do you call uh, case or whatever it is you know I don't know what the right word is but it's a transparent plastic um, you know storage uh, box or storage bin right that's what this is and then a bunch of stickies these three things will get you organized and and I'll, I want to walk you through how I did this so I, I bought a bunch of these boxes Okay, bunch of these transparent boxes. I have them. I have about hundred of those in my house right now, and and bunch of scotch tape and a bunch of these stickies. Okay, or post-it notes, right? And then what you do is you take a box and and you start. Um, what are, you know the best way to uh, say this? You start putting. Uh, these post-it note, right? You write a note. For example, I want to load this box with all batteries. Okay. And, and I'm going to, um, that's what I'll do, right? Just put the, put the note, post-it note on the box outside and, and paste it with a scotch tape. Um, and, uh, and that's it, right? And then I will create, I'll take as many boxes as possible and start putting all these stickies on all of these boxes. Uh, one could be a battery, the other could be, you know, um, you know, travel stuff, and then, uh, you know, maybe cables, maybe uh, pens, maybe, um, you know, screwdrivers, or maybe some tools, whatever. So just start labeling these boxes in a relevant way um, that is understandable by you, and that's useful to you, right? So at least you understand what you're doing. So you can start putting these, these tapes and then take all the stuff that you have and, and logically start moving all the stuff into these boxes, right? Very simple. Start moving stuff into the boxes. Now let me quickly come, uh, you know, uh, on the screen. Okay. So, uh, for example, if I have to show you some of the... So here is a box that I have, right? And it's called batteries here. And inside I have put a bunch of batteries, as simple as that, right? I put a lot of batteries and um, that's it, right? Now I know if I put it in my garage, now I know where to find the batteries. Um, and then um, I start, you know, as I start organizing stuff, as I start, you know, you know, putting all the stuff into the right baskets or right, right bins, I start, uh, to see a pattern evolve. Like maybe I can combine two bins. Uh, maybe um, I can go from a smaller to a bigger bin. Maybe from a bigger bin to a smaller bin. So you can now, you can now, you know, see exactly how this is going. Now, this this is not the hard stuff. You know, this, I mean, the, these boxes are not for the hard stuff. This bo these boxes are for paper also. So for at and you know, bills, I have one box and I have one for my water. I have one for my uh, cable, right? So I can separate all the papers across all these bins. Now, once you have these, these bins sorted out, 
the papers usually have to be scanned and i talked about this yesterday uh, or in my previous uh, previous uh, you know live cast i exactly talked about um, in fact let me uh, let me quickly come on the screen and and show you a um, couple of scanners and i already showed if you're not seeing the previous uh, there is a high possibility that uh, there is a high possibility that you have not seen the previous uh, previous broadcast um or there's a possibility that you may have, you have seen but anyway so i'll just show this to you quickly um so so here is a scanner i showed you it's called the neat scanner last time and this was a scanner that i bought in my in 2012 and and i had bunch of uh, uh documents at that point in time the problem with the scanner this is a great scanner it's a great technology i believe neat invented this whole thing which is not only you scan the documents but you also categorize the documents you separate the bills you separate the business cards and the bills will also give you the the taxes you paid and kind of gives you the entire rundown of all your uh, all your purchases so that you can take the take the stuff and apply to taxes if applicable right at the year end when you're filing your taxes this was a great technology back then but this technology uh, went away in other words it was slow um, and and need change their business model uh, they went and they went in the online subscription model and whatever it is uh, for some reason this this scanner is slow and and i had to get rid of this i paid 600 dollars for this and 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 uh, and and i got away from it now once i got away from it uh, the next scanner uh that i bought was the one that you see on the screen uh which is which is the uh the snap the scan snap and this is an incredible scanner it's amazing it's very portable i can carry it anywhere that i go i you know it's amazing so you know it's phenomenal uh, so this uh it, with this scanner i scan my entire office room or oh, i'll take that back i don't want to um over excite you with this um i would say Seventy uh, percent. Let's let's give that seventy percent. Seventy percent of my office room over a weekend, completely done. Just this this one scanner. Um, amazing. You know how how this this works. Um, so the options are very simple. Once you have your stuff into into the into the box into the boxes, you scan. Now there are three piles there, right? The stuff that you scan and you keep, stuff that you scan and destroy, uh, stuff that you cannot scan at all. So the stuff that you cannot scan uh, will go to the storage. if if you want to keep them in storage my suggestion is not to but then some people say i need a storage great so so put them in the in, in the bins label them move them to storage keep them as long as you think that you need them if not just get rid of it i don't like it uh, but sometimes while you are going the you are on this journey where you are trying to reinvent yourself by by decluttering yourself it makes sense to move the stuff into a storage or or to a location or even to your garage for that matters right so This is these are the three tools that I use uh, a scanner um, a scotch tape <laughs> a bin right uh, and pretty much those are the tools you don't need a you know you don't need uh, expensive uh, you know tools and by the way there are thousands of tools there is a whole industry that works off this whole concept and and as the consumerism is gr- growing by the day by the minute and so are these things that are being sold to us And, and that is that is just unbelievable the way this is going okay um let me see let me quickly shift to um um wow okay so okay um and the ski with the boot uh, attached made it to the bottom before you of course now that was the biggest fall i ever had steve <laughs> that was the scariest of the uh, of of the of all, of all the falls that I ever had on mountains um yeah okay um any questions anyone is, is this of value is this is this making sense is this of value i worked very hard on this powerpoint presentations It's just the, the the whole technology part right you know you know zooming in zooming in, you know uh, uh you know using all these transitions to go from one to the other Being challenged. I've never done this before, so I just wanted to make this meaningful to you. Helpful is this? Is this so far? Just let me know. Just, uh, just, just a quick response would help.
Okay, thank you, appreciate it, Steve. Thank you. Okay, um, that's all. Pretty much it. So those are the tools that I promised that I'll be sharing with you. Um, you know, it's 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 unbelievable. If 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 I have to, uh, you know, I did hundred experiments with this. The mountain happens to be one experiment, uh, but then uh, decluttering is another experiment. But there's so many experiments. But um, what I'll do is uh, I'll be back um, next. Uh, you know, what is this today? So. Uh, tomorrow right so what we're trying to do is want to streamline the live cast a lot of people asking me I have so much stuff to share with you so I'll be here tomorrow noon which is 12 p.m. the Pacific Standard Time and and I'm going to schedule that today right here right right I'm done with this live cast and and I wanted to share this with as many people as possible and tomorrow we'll be focusing on one other activity I did another thing which I did which is I completely got rid of my credit cards and I completely got rid of and I don't have I don't even check my credit anymore I don't know what credit I have I don't really care whatever credit I have I don't think I need any anymore and completely went away from because I believe credit card and credit score and your FICO score is the root of consumerism you have access to that it is going to it's going to clutter you later on Right. Tomorrow at noon, I will be going into very deeply into this concept where why you don't need credit cards, why you don't need FICO scores and how you can streamline your expenses in in terms of cash and in terms of convenience. In other words, um, or in other words, you live with cash and you live with in means. OK. And you, you do that conveniently, right? I'm going to go through that tomorrow noon because if I get into that now, it's going to take me a couple of hours to really wrap this up. So um, I'll, I'll just send it out an email from my email list. But by all means, do like this video if this is helpful to you. Share it on your post, all right? Share it on your post if you want. Let me see if I'm not on the screen. Oh, I'm not on the screen because I'm, oh, there I am. Whew, I thought I lost you for a second, okay? Um, I'm back on the screen. Hopefully, it's going to refresh in a second here, uh, and you can. Uh, yeah, I think it'll it'll refresh. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, there it is. It's loading. Okay, so um, tomorrow I will I will specifically talk about why consumerism. Uh, why FICO scores are the basis of consumerism and why access to a FICO score uh, is going to be um, is 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 going to be a single bottleneck in your journey to becoming completely free. Free is not from items around you. Excuse me. Free is also being financially free. Uh, and, and that has a significant impact on your overall success too. So I'll, I'll walk you through this entire scenario tomorrow at 12 noon. And, and I believe I'll continue to be in the morning time slot going forward. Uh, and, and we'll have all these kind of conversations, uh, you know, at least this level of conversation, uh, you know, uh, in, in that time frame. So that's going to be starting to, that will be happening starting tomorrow. And we'll see how long that goes. Okay. Uh, by all means, do share this. Uh, let other people know if this is of help to you and um, I'll be talking about credits I'll be talking about um, expenses I'll be talking about income I'll be talking about personal finance tomorrow at 12 noon okay tune in then uh, if anybody has a quick question I will go into it now if not appreciate you all joining thank you for uh, for this you know sudden participation I was not planning to be here uh, I in fact I thought about doing it nine o'clock but then we started a little early and uh, some of you joined some of you commented some of you waved at me thank you for doing so and uh, I look forward to talking to you tomorrow noon where I will pick up the topic of how I got rid of my credit cards and why I got rid of my credit cards and and why you need to be living within means and you need to be living on cash rather than pushing your FICO score up, getting borrowing credit and, and living beyond your means. Um, so we'll talk about that tomorrow. So thank you all. Appreciate you joining. Appreciate your comments. And I look forward to talking to you tomorrow at exactly 12 p.m. noon tomorrow Pacific Standard Time. And uh, all my friends in India, from Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nepal, Sri Lanka, and all of my friends here, um, 
um, you know, by all means, um, you know, thank you all for joining. Uh, Srini, can you talk about the Swedish death cleaning in one of your sessions? I did touch that in the last session, um, you know, and, and I kind of gave some, some ideas why. In fact, the idea of Swedish death cleaning, um, you know, is, is, you know, I'm implementing more or less the idea of mini. So the first step is to become a minimalist. The second step is to become a structurist or you, you know, you live, a, you, you create a structure about your living. Um, so you become minimalist. You become an, 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 an optimalist, uh, uh, and then you stay as, as an optimist in the, in, in the whole process, but you get to the position where by the time you're 55, 60 years old, that's what Margaret talks about in, in, in her book, uh, The Gentle Art of Death Cleaning. Um, and she says, you know, by the time you're 60 years old, you need to structure all the stuff, um, in a way where you know for sure you're going and your, your people have to remember you in their memories not through the possessions you have, right? She, she emphasizes on that. So I talked about this in the last, last video. Um, but I will, uh, I will come. My, my only excuse there, I did not read the book. So I have to, um, I got the philosophy because I heard, heard about her through multiple people and a lot of synopsis available about on that. But then I, I did not read the book. So I'll go and, I'm going to read the book. Um, and I'm going to really get into, into her mindset, uh, you know, as much as possible. And then I'll probably come and do a whole session on that one. Okay, so that's all for now. You all have a wonderful evening or, or day, wherever you are. Uh, be safe, be healthy, uh, do some good stuff, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.